Okay, my friends, welcome to this next video on Guess My Rule. Now, this is a combination of two videos I've previously made, one Concept Circles and the other one Daily Data. So if you did not check out those videos, make sure you circle back to them. Okay, so for this activity, which could be a numeracy routine as well, um, it is exactly what it sounds like. You're having students guess what the rule is. So you provide students with a, a prompt, right? And here we're using a single loop then. So you provide students with a prompt, they have to analyze what they see, and then you ask them, all right, what's the rule for these sets of numbers or what you see here? So in this video, what I'm gonna have you do is I literally, I always say this, and I don't know if you guys actually pause, but I want you to pause the video every time I give you a new prompt because I want you to try it out. This is gonna give you the experience that the students are gonna be feeling, and it also helps you when you're planning your guess my rule uh, routine. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this routine. So you can present it to kids and have them just try to work through it and figure out what the rule is. Okay, that's fine. I would really promote collaboration with this. And you're, you're gonna see some examples of different standards you can hit with this uh, activity or routine in particular. It is very difficult to come up with the rule on your own. I really highly recommend that you have the kids partner up, do triads, do groups, in order to talk it through, especially in the beginning when you're first working with this routine. Gradually, as the students get the hang of it, of course, you can have them work on it individually, but please make this a collaborative effort at first. Okay, so hopefully you thought about, you know, a couple different things that came up for you or what you think students would respond with. So the rule for this is even, even numbers. So you see two, eight, 2400, they're all even numbers. That's a rule that students could come up with. Now they can also say something like there are, you know, uh, it's all numbers less than 150. That's true too, that could be a rule. Okay, next up, I want you to take a stab at this one. This one was a little tougher. So the rule here was prime numbers. Let me explain why it was a little tougher. Students might automatically say, oh, they're all odd numbers, right? So that could be a response that you get. However, there's a two there. So the two, some students will see and it'll like throw them off guard a little bit. So they have to kind of reframe their thinking and come up with a different concept or a different rule. And some students may just miss the two completely and just focus on all the other ones and notice that there's a pattern of odd numbers. Now we're gonna throw in another loop. So we have a double loop then. That means we have multiple rules. So this is tougher. I always recommend starting with a single loop and moving on to the double loop. So pause and figure out what are the multiple rules that could work here. Okay, so the rule is odd numbers as well as numbers greater than 10. That is tough to come up with. And I cannot guarantee that your kids are gonna come up with these specific rules. They may come up with other ones. So that's why, can you imagine just the great discussions uh, that are gonna happen in your room because of this activity, like all the different things the kids would generate. So as you put up your set of rules, you can have students kind of talk about and justify some of the pieces. How do I know 11 fits into the middle of this Venn diagram? Students would have to explain, well, 11 is an odd number, prove that, and 11 is a number that's greater than 10, prove that. Right? So a lot of discussion and questioning happens with uh, when it gets like this uh, tricky. All right, now I wanna show you how it's not just about putting in numbers. We can put equations in as well and have students generate a rule based off that. So our rule here is that I created doubles, right? Expressions that are all doubles. And then of course you can talk about it. You can ask students, come up with another set of doubles that would fit into this or come up with a non-example. What expression would not be able to go into this single loop? Now with this same prompt, you could even have students come up with the fact that this all of the examples here are an even number plus an even number. They may not even say doubles. They may just notice that all of them are even numbers being added together. So again, you can ask students for a non-example of that. So it's not just, you can have a rule in mind that you want students to see, but kids can come up with things that you did not think of that are worth talking about. Okay, now let's take a look at this rule. 
All right, so in this one, we're dealing with place values. So it's not just numbers, it's place values. So with this, all of the numbers I've shown you uh, have five in the tens place. So I just wanted to show you how you can like vary the standards that you're hitting. You did some expressions, now you're dealing with some place value. And then we can also hit some geometry. So what would the rule for this be? So the rule here would be that these are all quadrilaterals, right? Again, as students, what other quadrilateral could fit in here? What would make sense? Or you can have, uh, you can simply ask, well, would a circle make sense to go in with the rest of these shapes? Why, why not? Now, these are not just isolated to primary grades, this routine. Guess my rule could be used for upper elementary as well. Here is an example using decimals. So the rule here is that all the numbers are less than one and five tenths or one and a half. As you can see, this is some real critical thinking that the kids have to do. It is not straightforward. Also for upper elementary, you can have them work with fractions. So this one in particular, they're all unit fractions. And you can ask them, all right, well, what about three fourths? Would three fourths be able to be put in this loop? Why or why not? All right, well, I'm hoping that you got to see the, the gist of how this activity works and a couple of different ways that you can utilize it in your room based off standards. I cannot wait to see all the amazing stuff you come up with with Guess My Rule.